Hi everybody, I'm Clint from Princess Craft RV and we're gonna do something a little bit different today. Today I'm located at our Houston dealership off the Gulf Freeway, which is not our usual place to shoot at all and I'm not your usual presenter. So we'll get PJ back for some more videos here soon. But since we are down here in Houston, we thought that we would look at some of the products that we have at this location that are unique to that location. And this is a Clipper 12.0 Pro trailer behind me now. Let's go over a few of the details on this trailer before we go inside and check out the, you know, the features and sizes and whatnot inside. So let's talk about some of these specs. A few quick details on the Clipper 12.0 TD Pro is that it is at length 17 foot 5 inches in its travel height, meaning that the, the back isn't popped up. It is 7 foot 5 inches. So it is not technically a garageable trailer, particularly with that air conditioner on top. Now it has a sleeping capacity of three and its tire size, well, its wheel size is 15 inch. Obviously it is a taller tire. It looks like an off-road tire and it has a fair bit of ground clearance. The hitch weight on this trailer is 340 pounds and the unloaded vehicle weight is 2,493. Now it does have a cargo carrying capacity of 1,347 pounds, which makes for a GVWR of 3,840. The coupler size on this trailer is two and five sixteenths inches and the water tank size is 27 gallons. Now that we have the specifications and numbers out of the way, let's go ahead and hop inside this Clipper 12.0 Pro and see what we can find there and uh, talk about the features. Let's go. This is a neat little camping trailer. So you may have noticed I am so much taller than PJ. She's at five foot and I am at six foot four, completely barefoot. So I'm in my shoes today, let's say six five, and you'll notice I have a wingspan of about six and a half foot there. So it's good enough on the wingspan. The height right in the doorway is well over my head, it's good, but it does come down. So I do run into impact points the further I get into this trailer. Not that bad as long as I'm aware of it, but you might want to be aware of it as well. Now that we are inside this space, let's start here with some quick storage. When you come in, obviously there's this flat surface. You can put anything there, your keys or whatnot, but you have some necessary storage down below right here. It's very easy, very workable storage. You have simple shelves. It's about 14-ish, yeah, 14, 16 inches deep two levels of shelving and a pretty good pull out drawer down here below, right there. Good amount of space. And I'm going to go ahead and push that in. There is a light for the door right on the side. You may not be able to see it, but it is a good light when you come in right there. A little bit of flat horizontal surface right here on the other side of the door too. But that brings us to this shower system. Now remember it has 27 gallons of fresh water and that feeds into uh, cold and a cold water system, 12 volt pump and whatnot, but also it does have a water heater on this trailer. So you can take that warm shower whenever you've, you're done at wherever you're camping, whether it be mountains, or maybe the beach, you want to rinse off the day, get comfortable for the night or start your morning off with a good rinse off, whatever. So it pops up. Now you don't have to have the windows open, obviously. Now, if you're camping out on BLM land, then maybe that's, maybe that's a real nice experience is you're just out there in the, in the open with a kind of nature opportunity, or you can close it up and you can hop in here. I'm going to, with my six foot four self, stand up in here and you're going to see that it does have a little bit of a space issue for the taller set. So I ducked it a little bit. And I'm obviously crouching some. Now this is a cassette toilet system with a uh, shower surround on the bottom and a curtain that can come all the way around. You can block the view from the outside, even if you have those windows open and keep water from getting in, not a problem. I will say the wet bath systems, I'm gonna take a seat, you can see how much space shoulder knee wise I have, okay? It is, not bad from a knee standpoint and a shoulder standpoint. And being tall, it is not uncommon for me to use a wet bath scenario just in a seated position, which is pretty typical for a residential situation where there's a built-in bench seat for, you know, just relaxing in the shower, if you will, I guess. Okay, 
you have some light switches here and that you have indoor this is actually your light at the bottom there that you might not be able to see it's your entry light um some shelves here safety feature right by the door with your fire extinguisher i'm going to step out of the bathroom because it's getting a little bit awkward if i do say so myself all right you saw that didn't you as i get further deeper into this trailer that six four it's getting lower okay it's fine with me you may have noticed from our previous videos i come from tent camping so i'm used to stooping but if it's not some a feature that you like um just be aware of that now the sink does it's not terribly deep it's a very functional camping sink hot water cold water and then you have some outlets and switches um whatnot one of them being your water heater one of them being water pump which i just activated and the shower started dripping good times all right let's look at some of the storage down here this is a rather deep cabinet i don't think i think we're going to roll in some b-roll actually it's a deep cabinet and it's a big open space so um whatever whatever storage you might need it could be uh cooking utensils or anything else you might pack maybe it's your pantry i don't know now another surface right here and a really nice size graystone microwave now it does have a rotating plate as most modern microwaves do it's still packed up because it's a brand new unit it has a small freezer fridge scenario it is a 12 volt compressor uh it's one of the everchill models they seem to do really good i've uh, i've enjoyed working with them and i do believe you'll have to check the video description below i believe it's a 1.8 cubic foot refrigerator um freezer combo it might be 1.5 so do always check the video description below for a reminder or to to have just the precise details whether it be specs and weights and things like that we'll put that in the, the description below okay i'm going to come across to this other side before we move too far into this space there is some more storage here down below it's a really good deep um drawer here it's about hmm, eight inches in uh depth from a height you know tall standpoint and then if you're going to go that way it's about two feet by two and a half feet same with the drawer below now you would say oh that's a stiff I mean, it's, that's not gonna pop out on you while you're traveling at all. If you're talking about, well, what about the space even deeper? Well, that's where your outdoor slide out kitchen is. And we'll show you that once we're outside. Down below the seating here, you're gonna find the 20K or the 20K BTU furnace. The air conditioner is a 13 5K air conditioner. I'll show you it separately. Now the controls for this furnace are actually on this wall over here. It's thermostatically controlled. And you also have a, a 12 volt, not, I'm sorry, 12 volt, a 110 volt outlet. And it's a GFCI uh, breaker style um, outlet for safety purposes. Over here, I have the solar controller. It's a Go Power product, which is a very solid solar panel product. So on the roof of this particular trailer is a 200 watt solar panel. So it's a nice little pairing there to keep your batteries charged up whenever you're in a sunny location. This is your converter to convert incoming power from shore power to 12 volt power, charge your battery. And it also distributes 12 volt power to uh, all your 12 volt systems in the trailer. It also has breakers and fuses. You'll sometimes hear a fan running whenever it's charging and whatnot. Nothing to be worried about. This sofa, you'll notice it's a four inch foam. It's fairly high density. I think it's pretty durable feeling. It does pull out for another sleeping space. So if you're bringing a relatively small person, now this is just a guess, but this feels like just over four feet maybe maybe five-ish feet but i think it's just under five foot long it does pull out this platform here and you can make another sleeping space for a smaller human or dog whoever you're camping with or if you really don't need that much floor space but you have gear maybe you're hiking in a, in a space or mount, you know bouldering mountain climbing or something like that or you just want to keep your gear inside with you and you need a little bit more depth you can use this as a little bit of a shelf for those purposes i don't see how that would be a problem okay let's talk about this sleeping area because 
it works it works well but it's kind of low let's check it out well here we are you may hear on the microphone that i am pretty close to this ceiling so the sound is going to be kind of reflective now at six foot four i can i can lay pretty straight but there is a surface a horizontal surface at the bottom for a shelf where you can put your keys or whatnot and there's a tv mount down there that's why i'm turning this way instead of the other way because i would figure that if you're going to watch tv you're going to want to sit a little bit like this watching TV versus behind your head. This trailer does not come with a TV, but it has a mount inside and out, so you can get one pretty easy um, and have at it. Your power for the TV is over there on that wall, kind of behind the microwave, a USB port and a an outlet for the cable, if you have part cable or a satellite. Pretty nice intercoil spring mattress. Again, this air conditioner is 13.5K BTU air conditioner and its controls are right on it. And if you want to change the filters or clean or whatever, right there. But look at where it is. If you're camping in, in here and you need cold air blowing right on you at night, you can't get much better than that. That cold air is going to be right on you. So um, I like it for um, cold or hot weather camping and getting out maybe a beach camping trip or what have you let's talk about i guess the window all right don't mistake in my current situation as uncomfortable again i i i enjoy camping in tents and things like that so it's not a problem let me see if we can show you this window it does come with this kind of velcro blackout shade but this is your standard slideable window with a screen. I didn't mention there's a screen on the door as well. So if you want to open up the, the tent style windows, open up this window and the screen door and, and allow for airflow, it's a pretty easy unit to get whatever breeze is available to pass through this space. It can be pretty comfortable. Other than sitting up straight, which I am not able to do in this situation, other than that, it is a comfortable area. So how about we go outside and check out the features there? Okay, you know, I did mention the screen door. I wanna show you how it works while I'm here. Take a look at this. It has a little clip at the top and it just slides down like so. And there you go, you have your full screen door with half of it that can open straight up and allow that air to come through. To put it up, you just slide it back up and clip it into place. Nice, rotatable, easy to do grab handle for travel purposes. Two levels of steps that are easy to fold out. The reason for two is obviously this is a fairly high riding trailer. So for many of the lightweight vehicles that can tow this, this is going to easily match or maybe even better the ground clearance of the tow vehicle on a lot of those smaller SUVs or smaller trucks and whatnot. So it's a, if you're hoping to camp in maybe a place that you need to utilize a fire road or for service or something like that, the ground clearance is going to be your friend. You do have a full size spare 15 inch wheel and it is a steel wheel. So it's just kind of a no nonsense situation here. I do like that. And you have a bottle opener at the door. This switch is also your friend. Take a look. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I haven't got everything buttoned up on the outside, but take a look what happens. See that? If I had everything squared away to, to put this all the way down, I'd, I'd show you, but it is an electric lift system for that roof. It's not a heavy roof anyways, it's all fiberglass. It's really a neat uh, product that they have up there to make sure that it's pretty durable. Um, it can withstand you know, high winds, uh, maybe small hail and shrug it off no problem. But just the added feature of not having to lift it manually whenever you're at camp is pretty nice. Let's head on around. All right, I do apologize for how tight this shot is. It might not be the most representative of what you'll see out there in the wild because hopefully you're surrounded by open spaces and trees. This is the back of that furnace. You will wanna you know, make sure it's clear of insects, debris, spiders, and whatnot, but also don't touch it when it's running because it'll be hot. So over here, 
satellite or park cable inlet. This is an inlet for, maybe you have an external solar panel that you can put in the sun while you camp in the shade. You can plug in right there. 30 amp power cord, water heater. It's a six gallon water heater. This is your water, fresh water tanks inlet. 27 gallons, I believe. Do check the video description below. And then you have city water. And this is, as I understand it, this is a flush system. Um, let's keep on going because I'm a little claustrophobic. All right, we're at the tongue. Now this is a two and five sixteenths ball. You're gonna see a all steel frame, particularly on this A frame. It's a manual jack. If you ever wanted to change that out to an electric jack, that's a pretty easy thing to do. It's also a good location if you wanted one of those kind of over jack bike racks, like the jacket system with the let's go arrow frame. Nice system, we like to install those. You will also put your propane tank, your 20 pound propane tank, and your batteries up in this area. Uh, from the looks of it, I would put one propane tank and up to two RV marine style batteries. Um, if you were to go the route of going with lithium ion, you're, it, they would still intend for you to mount them on the tongue, but I would get a dedicated box that's lockable because it's a high dollar, high value item. So keep that in mind. Nice diamond plate in case uh, you're traveling in a place that might kick up some rocks, good protection there. Um, fiberglass, laminate, a roof rack. You're gonna see the air conditioner on the top. Again, there's a, the 13.5 uh, BTU air conditioner. And I'm around this side. Let me dive into this space next. Okay, I'm on this side of the kitchen. This is your quick connect for propane. So you'll be able to use the griddle on this kitchen. Let me go ahead and put this up. It has an easy clip right there. Now, this has a locking mechanism on it, and we're gonna pull that out. It sounds really sturdy, doesn't it? It is exactly that, very sturdy. I'm gonna start on this side. This is an Everchill 12 volt compressor style refrigerator, and if you turn it down low enough, it's a compressor style freezer. You do have your plugins here, and USB port and 12 volt circular style, cigarette style port there. And then this is your light switch. Pretty handy, light over here too. While I'm looking at those lights, I did notice that this is a Keter rail. And though this does not come with a awning that attaches to it or whatnot, that Keter rail being there means that you have a lot of options to find, you know, to source an awning that just slides in and then you tether down the poles and it's really handy. Again, I do like how sturdy this is. You have a wash basin. You're gonna have to bring your own water, but look, it's portable. You can take it out, easy to do other things with. If I come around to the front, this is where your griddle is. So let me unlatch that. And this is a really nice griddle, a good system. And I don't know really what to say other than if you've seen any of the camp griddles like the Blackstones or Greystones, Suburbans or what have you, then you're gonna know exactly what it is and what it does. This one being easy access a little bit away from the trailer, you're not gonna have any heat right up against the trailer, you're out in a breeze, the smoke can be blown away. I do like this scenario. And again, it's just such a sturdy system. So. Um, keep that in mind, sturdy and easy to clean. I'm gonna close this up and we're gonna move around the trailer. Okay, so let's move on. It does have an outdoor shower here. That's another reason to have this key rail. It's an easy way to attach an outdoor shower stall. So maybe an awning over the kitchen, maybe a shower stall, depending on what your current camping situation is. But this is a hot and cold exterior shower. Easy access, obviously, some 110 plugs. And if you would like to mount your TV from inside, outside at any given time, the same TV and bracket can be brought out here. Again, you do have to bring your own TV to the situation, but the brackets are here, uh, the mounts are here, and then you have your satellite or whatever inlet or outlet right there. Good shot at those tires and the, the really good amount of clearance. So I'm gonna go down a little bit here. You have a lot of clearance if you're gonna go over some rough terrain, maybe the, the forest service road that you really wanna travel down has some ruts or something like that. And having ground clearance is a little bit of an assurance or 
more confidence, if you will, that you and your equipment and your trailer will navigate that safely and fine. So a good look at that. These are leaf springs, so really easy on the maintenance side of things as well. Okay, again with the light, the rack, this canvas is a really high durability, good quality canvas. It's fairly heavy. And I do like that on the, the sides and the very back of the trailer, you have a way to get light and air to flow through. I really like that. Okay, so right here on the edge, this is where you're gonna access the cassette for the cassette toilet. Now this trailer doesn't have a traditional black tank, but it has a real easy system that you're gonna find in a lot of the smaller and more overland type options out there. So let me clip this up and we have a view of, this is the back of the shower pan, if you will, shower enclosure. And then what would this be? Well, this would be the outlet for the gray water that is generated by the shower. So this will, you would run it to an exterior tank or if you're in a campsite, you can run this to from the sewer, the gray tank outlet into the sewer inlet at an RV park or campground. Then this is your cassette. Now this is a fill reservoir for the cassette toilet. You put your water in here to make sure that the cassette, which has its own freshwater reservoir, gets full so you can flush. That fills there. And then here, you just release one way or the other. This cassette toilet. Now this is, uh, it looks about kind of the five-ish gallon range. It's a Thetford product. And this would be where your black tank contents would obviously be held. Now with wheels, you can take it, you can roll it anywhere. It does have a handle. You can roll it around. And what you can do then is you can rotate this, take the cap off. So I'm gonna pretend, okay? Rotate this, take the cap off, take it to a uh, sewer inlet or maybe a vault toilet at a campground, pour it down in. This relieves pressure or, or, or allows airflow so that it doesn't glug and make a mess and whatnot. You know, it's just easier. Now you may notice that this is this valve is closed. So you don't actually have to come in contact with any of the contents of this container because when you pull this out, the valve closes. When you push it in, then this valve opens up as soon as it clicks into place. It's a very easy, low maintenance scenario. So you're gonna hear it kind of click in. Now as it clicked in, the valve that I showed you opens up and the toilet is ready to use. So I'm going to go ahead and unclip this, bring this down. You may have noticed one more outlet here. That's this little outlet right here. That comes off the back of the sink. So yet another way to get gray water. So the, the sink gray water out of there, the shower gray water out of here. And I typically travel with a trailer like this with a small wheeled luggable um, tote, gray water tote. And it works fantastically or I get a situation with a hose that I can run into a campground sewer outlet. So there it is. I do believe that brings us to the end of this Clipper 12.0 Pro trailer. I think it's a real neat option, particularly for someone who's single or couple who wants to do some really neat, not typical RV park kind of camping. If you wanna be off the grid a little bit, if you wanna be deep in public lands or maybe on a beach trip, this is a real neat option, particularly if you need, if you're towing with a lighter weight tow vehicle. Um, maybe you need the ground clearance. Maybe, maybe it's, you know, a parent and a kid scenario, just wanting to get out to some state parks or what have you. This is a very compelling, neat option. Even with my size, I, I find it very interesting and I think I could have a really good time camping with, you know, my wife or take one of my kids out for a weekend sort of scenario. So if that sounds like anything that you would be interested in for you, for, for as, as a single, a couple, as a family, what have you, I encourage you to look at the, the Clipper 12.0 Pro and um, see what, it, you know, it's, maybe it stirs your imagination a little bit. I'm Clint at Princess Craft RV. I'm at our Houston location today, and I hope you are doing well. Thank you for joining us on this little walk around tour, and we will see you next time.